Hello there, I'm Alger Hill, and I'm British, so I've been missing the EU, honestly. So I thought, why not try and recreate it? I'm going to play as non-historical Germany and try and form the glorious EU. Make sure to subscribe for more Hoy videos like this, plus a like never hurts. One like equals one vote for another referendum? My start is pretty boring. Just go down the opposed mustache man as normal. I'm not going to focus on that too much, as you know, you just put armies in the front and snake. Easy stuff. Repair everything, fix my country, and then start getting ready for uniting Europe. Of course, as this is non-historical, weird janky things begin to happen and will continue to happen. At least Russia is staying pretty boring. Luckily though, Austria is a bit of a nice guy. He actually does something insanely nice to get the EU started without much effort from me. He starts getting really strong, and there's a certain focus I've been eyeing up. So to get started with it all, I invite Austria-Hungary to a very aptly named faction, and as a reward, they very kindly annex the Czechs for me instantly. What nice guys. I start getting a little bit worried about the exact sequence of events if I try and force puppet them, so after a little bit of digging through the event files, I realise that I am in for some incredible luck, other than the fact that someone in my stream starts calling me middle-aged, I'm not even 30 yet. The world then starts to go a bit mental, with Yugoslavia and Romania joining the Allies just when I was hoping to invite Romania into the fold. And this sort of begins World War II a bit early, all I watch from the sidelines and just quietly try to build planes. I don't care though, because the massive and powerful Austro-Hungarian Empire just sort of goes, yeah, okay, and becomes my puppet. Basically, I was still able to do the satellite Hungary focus, because technically what has happened is that Hungary annexed Austria and then Czechoslovakia. Their tag remains Hun, and so they will automatically accept and agree to my puppeting them through the focus. What's even better is that they're a proper satellite. Because I'm playing as democratic Germany, any puppets I make are garbage supervised states which are useless to me, but this focus ignores that requirement entirely, meaning I get an insanely powerful puppet that is actually bigger than me and is forced to give up about 75% of its factories and 100% of its manpower. Now it's just time to dismantle my perfectly named faction and realize that I can't join the allies because world tension isn't 80% yet despite all the horrors going on in the world. After a little wait though, they let me in, and I consider maybe taking over the faction myself, but sadly it just costs too much. Also, I randomly put my camera on for some reason, probably just to show off my wife's cheese shortbread she made for me. Then it was time to create the Central European Alliance and see what I could do with it. But first, it was time to actually start helping the Allies a little bit, in the hope that I could steal some land, so I joined this weird war fighting against Italy. I snake around, encircling, and pushing easily, and I end up actually taking all of northern Italy, Latium, and whatever else I can get my sauerkraut riddled hands on, while the AI irritatingly puppets everyone and their Italian grandmother as well. A little while later, I realised that I will actually never be able to take over leadership of the Allies, because the Brits just have too much damn manpower, so I just leave the Allies to it and yeet off. I then invite Belgium and Luxembourg to our new and improved faction, the Central European Alliance. Then, with a little bit of improved relations, guarantee independence, and a few kind words, I get Norway and Sweden in as well. In the midst of it though, the UK attacks the Netherlands, who then promptly join our faction, allowing us to fight the Allies very suddenly, which means the French have not guarded their borders and I waltz through the Maginot Line. Plus, Iraq and Iran want to join as well for some reason. First though, we have to fight other allies such as Yugoslavia, so we take all of Austria's troops and form a front line. Weirdly, Bulgaria also wants to join the faction and then almost immediately leave it again for some reason. Ah, uh, what they left? We snake a bit into France and then they die, giving it all to us. The Franco-British Union then weirdly forms for some reason, but it doesn't matter because I now dominate Europe. However, the game then starts to get really weird, with Finland then forming the European League, which is then joined by fascist Estonia, which makes it a fascist faction, but they're not even really in Europe. Whatever though, we can get the Poles to join our glorious, real European faction, so it's fine. After a few mistakes, where I realise I haven't been taking a vital railway, massively slowing down the entire Yugoslav front, plus losing like half of my submarine fleet in a really dumb move, I eventually get my act together and start properly hitting Romania and Yugoslavia, crushing them. I then turn my attention to England, who are the only major power left, but I just can't get naval superiority. After a few months of port raiding and just trying to figure things out, the enemy fleet just goes somewhere else and disappears, so I get all superiority I need and I just land my entire army there. Within about 15 seconds, I'm in London and knocking at Birmingham's gates as well. It's pretty weird. But then the weirdly named Franco-British Union is gone. 
What follows might be the longest peace treaty of my life playing Hoi, with powers everywhere taking all kinds of stupid stuff, including my own bloody puppet puppeting things himself. Why did I not install player-led peace conferences for this game? But eventually it did end, and I got pretty much all of Europe, plus all kinds of resources in Malaysia, like all the good rubber and oil as well. Plus I got Canada, and just look at the size of this faction. However, just when I think I'm all in the clear, something weirdly surprising happens. The Soviet Union, on its own, attacks Poland, doing an insane reverse Barbarossa. Whatever am I going to do? Well, it turns out just win and kill them, because they've not put troops on the front, so I can just kill them. I'm going to end this foregone conclusion of a game here, seeing as the USSR will capitulate in literal months. But if you are interested in seeing me continue this weird, insane, non-historical European game, and try to get the rest of Europe into the fold, do let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'd highly recommend that you subscribe and to like the video for more strange, kind of unorthodox scenarios like this. I'm going to try and get one or two of these edited style of videos out onto the channel per week. Next video is playing a very weird non-historical mod as a very special kind of France. I'm going to be ending the video here, but I'm going to leave you with a cool little sped up snapshot of the entire game, just in case you were curious to see my entire progress, because I do actually quite like those videos that you see on YouTube sometimes where it's just like the whole game as one. So yeah, enjoy, let me know what you think, and bye bye